everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Board Gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking all about science. Now some of you may remember that a while ago I did a video about board games just about science in general. Today we are going to be focused very specifically on chemistry. That's right, we're going to be talking about games that dive into chemistry at some level. Now for those of you who don't know, chemistry technically as a field is really about the elements, the periodic table of the elements, how the those things combine together, how they make molecules, how they make compounds, how they twist and writhe and turn, the bindings that they make, all of that kind of stuff. So what I did is I picked a group of games that represent not only how the science of chemistry works, but like actually like laying out molecules and the elements and things like that to build up these compounds and different things. But I also wanted to find games that really help focus the logical aspects of the scientific method. And so I came up with some really, really interesting ones. I hope that you guys enjoy it. As always, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think of this category? What do you think of chemistry in general? I know a lot of you probably didn't really like chemistry too much, but do you like it now? Do you like games about chemistry or just things where you can like learn stuff in general? What do you all think about it? You know that I love hearing your comments all the time, but but with that, we are going to get started with my number five. At number five, I've got a game where we're essentially going down to the very lowest level in terms of what we're doing in chemistry. And in this case, what we're talking about is combining elements and with other elements to build compounds. So we are talking about Ion, a compound building game. In this game, this is a card drafting game where it's somewhat similar to like Seven Wonders, where you're going to be taking a single card and putting it on the table, getting the next card and putting it down. So you've got different um, cards that represent elements or polyatomic ions, and those will have charges or they won't have charges. And the idea is that you're placing cards down and then hopefully you'll get a matching card. So for example, if you get something with a positive charge, then you get something else with a negative charge so that you can combine them together and have something that's neutrally charged. You're also trying to get what are known as the noble gases, which are the fancy little fellas over on one side of the periodic table who don't want to have anything to do with the peons and the rest of it, <laughs> essentially. So again, this is really a base level game for how chemistry works and what it does. Now, the reason that it's a little bit lower on the list is honestly because I like the other games better. And for me personally, Ion is a little bit more ab abstract than it could have been because you're talking about cards that represent these ions and these elements and things, and you don't really need that. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a little bit. That said, it is a great game, and again, this is the basic building blocks of chemistry. This is what we are doing in chemistry. It's a great teaching tool. It's a great learning tool. Ion is my number five. At number four, I've got a game where you are trying to build up organic compounds utilizing little baby tiles. Now this is a really interesting one because it's actually a cooperative game and it involves these little tiles that represent different elements that you're trying to put together in a specific way. The game itself is covalence. Now I mentioned that we are building organic molecules here. For those of you who don't know, organic molecules simply means that they have carbon in them. So you can see on the cover even, we've got a nice little molecule there that has, uh, it only has one carbon, but still, it's an organic molecule. So in this game, you've actually got two teams. You've got the one group, which are the knowers, and they're the people who are actually looking at the card and seeing what their partner has to make. And then they're allowed to give clue cards down to say it has X number of oxygens, it has Y number of carbons, all of that kind of stuff. So the thing is about this game that I, 
I am a little bit turned off by is just the fact that it has a relatively limited number of elements. The thing is, you can see it's a small box, right? You don't expect it to be really massive and crazy big. I mean, the fact is that uh, the designers of this game really focused on it very efficiently and effectively. But that said, the reason that it's lower on the list is just because you don't have as much going on. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm like, uh, I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, because you're sitting there and you're building up your little tiles and all that kind of stuff, but it just could have been bigger, it could have been like, whoa, and that kind of thing. But that said, you learn about the different types of bonds. We got single, double, and triple bonds. You learn about the different elements and uh, what they are and where they come from and, uh, well, not what they come from, but essentially their atomic numbers, the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, all that kind of stuff. So, in this way, I like this better than Ion simply because you're actually able to see the structure of these individual molecules that you're building, which is something that is very important in chemistry, particularly when you're trying to learn about it. And again, covalence is a great teaching tool. It's a lot of fun. And again, because it's cooperative, it means that it generally goes over a little bit better, particularly with non-scientists. But with all of that, covalence is my number four. At number three, I've got another game that is actually based off of tile building of different molecules and things of that nature, but it plays out extremely differently from Covalence, and I find it to be more fun, personally, essentially. The game itself is molecular. In this game, the idea is, again, that you are building up a, um, you are building up molecules through tiles on the board. The thing is that everybody is collectively building on the same thing, and you are trying to essentially build up specific uh, specific goal cards is effectively what they are, where you are trying to uh, complete certain uh, functional groups that you have on your cards and you have different effector molecules or effector cards that allow you to sort of sabotage your competition or help you out and this kind of thing. And so it's really interesting just in the sense of it's much larger scale compared to Covalence and this kind of thing, which is one of the reasons I really enjoy it. The competitive aspect is really, really fun, frankly. Um, it Honestly, it feels more like science. I know it sounds terrible, but really that's what it boils down to because science in the end is a competitive field. The fact is, if you're working on something similar to somebody else, then you are in a race with them and one of you is going to make it and get published and the other one is not. And it's the unfortunate truth of the scientific world. However, all of the games here on this list, or pretty much all of them, are really, really light, very, very quick. And this is actually the quickest of uh, the games, really, at least uh, when I've played it, which again is a great selling point, especially for newer players, because it means that it's much easier to pick up and sit down and just play through it. And on top of that, um, you get a little bit more versatility compared to covalence because you're not limited to the actual um, the actual molecules you're building because everybody is just sort of going free form and it's almost like a boggle in the sense that you're trying to find exactly what it is that you need. So it's kind of cool in that sense where you're like competitive molecule building. It's really cool. It's a really interesting concept. Again, it's a lot of fun. Molecular, my number three. And number two, I've got a game that finally takes us into a chemistry lab. And effectively, the gameplay is very, very similar to most of the other games that I've talked about already, but it adds a great deal of depth to the, um, to the idea of the science and how it works and exactly what we're doing and all that kind of stuff. The game is 
compounded. Now, in this game, the idea is that everybody is working in a lab. We are all working in a lab. One person has the lab key. They are the person who is in charge, also known as the first player. And the reason I love this game is that just like with uh, like molecular and um, and covalence, you have cards that show what it is you're trying to make. The thing is that the way it's done is you have like a little grab bag of uh, elements that represent um, the actual percentage spread of these elements in nature, which is just really cool, if you ask me first off. And the second thing is that you not only have to go and you have to build up these different molecules using these cool little plastic gem things, but at the same time, you're also trying to deal with essentially lab drama. So you're trying to build yourself up so that you can store more elements, you can draw more elements, you can get more cards, you can do better, all this kind of stuff. On top of that, you have to deal with disasters in the lab. You can literally have lab fires. Now, that said, if you used a carbon and two oxygens to make yourself a nice CO2 fire extinguisher, nothing happens to you. So it just things like that. Strategically, I like Compounded more than the other games I've talked about so far because it has more strategic depth in it. And that's really what it boils down to is that I like the, the depth of this game because we still have the idea of building up these molecules. You're able to look at them and see what the structure is. On top of that, you've got the versatility in this game of being able to play it competitively, cooperatively, team, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot more options with this game. Overall, tremendously fun, great game. Compounded, my number two. At number one, I've got a game that probably belongs the least on this list technically. However, it was the first game I thought of when I wanted to do this video. Because I mentioned at the beginning, one thing I wanted to talk about was the actual scientific process, how it works, how science functions, all that kind of stuff. And that's really what this game does, is it shows that logical progression. That said, the actual chemistry on it is a little bit wonky and one might argue blasphemous to an extent. Either way, the game itself is alchemists. In this game, you are combining ingredients together in order to make potions that you then try to sell to adventurers. And the idea behind this game is that you are trying to figure out what the symbols for these individual cards, these individual ingredients are. And you do that by essentially combining them together and seeing what happens. It's like Cave Johnson always says in Portal, we are just throwing science at the wall and seeing what sticks. That is essentially what this game boils down to. That is effectively what you are doing. But the fact is, this really shows a lot of the scientific process. In doing so, a lot of it is satirically done. It's not done in a really serious way and and even reading through like the instructions and things like that is absolutely hilarious, right? So it's not joking about science, but at the same time, it's taking it and making the process of science humorous, which I greatly appreciate, right? So again, the basic idea for this is that you are combining these ingredients together to see how it is that, what it is that they make so that you can deduce what the individual symbols are. After that, you have to publish your results. If you are correct or incorrect, it doesn't matter because they're published, right? Well, I mean, if they're incorrect, somebody can tell you that they're incorrect. So you've got essentially every level of the scientific process. You've got the collection of the individual ingredients. You've got the actual combination of the ingredients, seeing what happens to them. And then you've got the deductive reasoning of, okay, well, when I did this with this, then I got this, and when I did this with that, then I got this other thing. So that means blurg, right? It gives you a lot of information when you're doing that. Now the thing is that it can be difficult to interpret 
but at the same time, it really shows logical scientific thinking. Uh, again, as far as this list is concerned, probably doesn't necessarily fit in terms of the technical aspects. However, the mental aspects and the actual process aspects, this is by far the best fit of all for this particular list. Alchemist is my number one. So that's it for me, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed my top five favorite chemistry-based board games. This is actually kind of a small field. We don't really see a whole lot of games specifically geared towards chemistry, but that said, like with my number one, we can have a little bit of wiggle room in terms of exactly what is a chemistry game or a science game in general. Now, what do you guys think about it? When you think about something like science or learning and things like that, do you think about it in a very strict sense or do you have a little bit more of a loose interpretation like I did where you can talk about games having the thought process behind it or even just looking at the process of science in general as something that works and fits well into it. But that said, once again, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, leave any and all thoughts in the comments below. You guys know I love hearing from you and I love talking about all this stuff all the time. But once again, thank you very much for being here and I will see you next time.